Neopets, The Darkest Fairy. Uh, it's a game. You should play the game. Just kidding, don't play the game, it's bad. How do I know this? Well, I played the game. Some background. Neopets.com was a wildly popular early browser game designed to make you visit McDonald's and believe in Scientology. That isn't a joke, I'm totally serious about the Scientology. This game was quickly made while God was looking away. And for some reason it's on the PS2. So I beat the game. The whole game. It takes like 40 hours. So come with me on this amazing journey. And together, we will be able to save Xenu. Also, every FMV in the game is at a low resolution and cannot be upscaled no matter what. Don't ask me. Anyway, so the game begins when the Pillar Men awaken from the bottom of the ocean. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, but that plot thread takes like 10 hours to come back, so we're gonna go to a farm now. So you play as Tormund, and you live your entire life in an extremely skinny fursuit. You start the game by beating up a woman because you want to be a police officer. Then my emulator fucked up and did this. But then after that fixes, you get to spend 10 minutes herding small sheep with uncooperative AI into a small pen that they actually don't go into. You resolve to enter your home, but are put off by the fact that your house is a TARDIS because the inside is so much bigger than the outside. So anyways, after years of being trapped in an endless waking nightmare, your father finally trusts you to deliver a package to the kingdom of Meridel. And to ensure your safety, your father offers you the family sword and says, Listen, Tor, it is not a toy. So anyways, we get our sword made of wood, and then we just kind of triumphantly fuck off. After exactly 12 seconds of walking, we interrupt a robbery. So the most logical action for a child to take with a wooden stick is attempted murder. Anyway, so that works, and then this happens. Alright, so the tobacco frog gives us a cool amulet and tells us literally to never take it off under any circumstances, no matter what. Uh, so the amulet isn't really visible on our character at all. It took me 30 minutes of navigating a blasted hellscape and attempting to get over destroyed infrastructure before we finally reached the gates of the castle. But not all is well in Meridel Castle, because I am almost immediately robbed by the troll face, who proceeds to take my package in a really cool animation. And when you chase after him, the game just kind of does this. And that pretty much happens until you get to his hideout, at which point you're almost robbed because you're a child with a stick until Obi-Wan from the Clone Wars helps you? Oh yeah, did I mention that James Arnold Taylor is in this game? I'd wager you'd make a fine knight someday. So we go to deliver the package when Tor attempts to sign up for the fucking military? But to make this rational life decision, we need to find ourselves a sponsor. Fortunately, there is a random drunk person in the bar who is willing to sponsor us as long as we put his sword back together. I did it in two minutes, the lazy fuck. In a strange moment of clarity, the game actually requires that you get permission from your dad in order to join the military. So you run all the way home like an Ethiopian who smells a dead zebra, but your parents pretty much tell you to fuck off because your sister has gone missing in the woods. So you run all the way to the woods like an Ethiopian man chasing a live zebra. Also all ropes in the game sound like this. So in the deepest part of the woods, your sister's being filmed for a hentai by a plant? Which you pretty much just proceed to fucking kill? So your sister's back now, and your dad's pretty much just like, Oh, son, you're the most responsible gardener I've ever seen. I'll let you join the military. At which point, I had to hold the W key for an additional 10 more minutes while I signed up. There is no fast travel in this game. About two minutes after signing up, Tormund realizes that he's made a terrible mistake. His ass belongs to the dinosaur now. Uh, but before that, we gotta go to sleep so we can be contacted by a dark influence in our dreams. Done. I guess we built sand. Anyways, after that disturbing nightmare, we have to get to our duties, which include, but are not limited to, imprisoning mice people, murdering sentient poop in the sewer, getting rid of crows, but I forgot to film it because this game is so fucking boring. Oh yeah, and save the village that's being raided by the Mujahideen. So I spend the proper nine minutes walking all the way to Afghanistan without saving, before realizing that if the enemies here hit me, they permanently softlock me due to a glitch in my emulator. So I reload a save and then walk all the way back over to Afghanistan and then save. So in order to save the village, I have to beat the entire area without getting hit once. So we get to the end of the area without getting hit once, and then there's this really big muscular dude. Anyways, we don't have to worry about him hitting us because the game is super easy to exploit. And it turns out we didn't have to because he just dies of a heart attack. As a reward for our brave work under the CIA, the King of Meridel himself, Scarl the First, knights us in a really awkward FMV. But not all is well in the Kingdom of Meridel. There are dark clouds approaching Illizen's Glade. What's Illizen's Glade, you may ask? 
Go fuck yourself. Our character goes to sleep where he has a dream about being laughed at for going to school in his underwear. And when we wake up, we realize that everyone left the castle without us. Fortunately, Obi-Wan is able to communicate with us from the top right quadrant of the screen to tell us that all of the knights have gone to Ilzen's glade and have not come back. So like a reasonable person who does not yet wish to kill themselves, you spend 10 minutes walking all the way over to Ilzen's glade, only to find the place overrun with werewolves, who are basically just bigger, stronger versions of you. Apparently, the Neopets universe just discriminates based on race. So after we beat the werewolves at basketball, we encounter the King Werewolf, who's also a rapist and only speaks in an Australian accent. Novice, two bones. <laughs> So it's pretty fucked up that the werewolves keep an even bigger version of themselves as a pet, but we're gonna fight it anyways. Uh, just kidding, you get knocked the fuck down. Hello there. Okay, so that actually killed him. He's dead. Come. We must leave quickly before- <laughs> That is- that is a fucking boomerang. Anyways, he caps off the racial stereotype by robbing a woman and then fucking off. We try to see if she's okay and then she just punts us off a building, but it's fine because- There is no canonical fall damage in this game. Alright, so I hope you're sitting down for the rest of this shit. So it turns out that the extra special amulet that the tobacco frog gave us about 10 hours earlier in the story is extremely similar to the amulet that the werewolf just stole and is required for resisting the influence of the darkest fairy's clouds, which managed to cover the entire span of the map within the time it took for me to fall off of a 40-story building. So now the entire world is infested with demons that take approximately 60 seconds seconds to kill each and there's no point in fighting them so you run all the way over to the castle. We get into the castle and realize that the king is actually super into Findom, while also overhearing the darkest pillar man's plan to commit genocide. We decide that moving around in a really noisy set of armor is actually a good idea and then this happens. Kill him. So after being threatened with a good time, you attempt to run to the dining hall where Yeah, they just miss. And with the help of a random and unexplained maid, you are able to jump into the sewers to escape. The fairies are kind of disappointed that you're late for your 11pm dick flattening, so they send a fireball to kill your ass. And with a bit of luck, you are able to drop into the sewers, completely unscathed. Anyway, so our new protagonist now arrives at Fairyland, Land of the Fairies, where she can distantly hear the audience questioning why the fuck they're here. I hear you out there asking for an explanation. The answer is no. Your name is Roberta, and you're here with your magic teacher, who walks like he constantly has to take a shit. You're pretty much here to tell the Queen of the Fairies that that the world might end soon? Not sure? Turns out the court's already in session, so they just tell you to fucking wait. Your teacher heads to the library, presumably to shit in a book. Meanwhile, you save an old woman's cat from a tree, but I didn't film it because I didn't think it would be very important. Turns out she gives you an amulet. Then you just navigate the entire maze for a fetch quest before finally being called into the chambers of the queen. You tell her that there are clouds, and then you leave. This prompts your character to head through 14 office buildings, 20 cul-de-sacs, and 5 pizzerias to get to your room and go to fucking sleep. And when you wake up, I turn on the dubstep part of the soundtrack so you know it's pretty bad. As it turns out, the Darkest Fairy is just really kinky and brought the clouds over here as well. Also, I don't know if you saw that just now, but she shot fire that became rope. Anyways, you go find your teacher and it turns out he really did shit in that book, but he feels much better now, thank you. Since the game gives you no incentive to fight any enemies ever, you just try to get out normally. This involves murdering a dog in order to ring a bell. Chungus. Since Big Chungus now blocks the normal staircase, you very reasonably decide to head down the Endless Staircase to escape. The Endless Staircase is a very simple puzzle that goes like this. Alright, we're done. You start to run away, and the Darkest Fairy is kind of just like, Oh, that's, that's the fuck who rang the bell, goddammit. And a giant cloud finger just knocks you down to Earth, killing you instantly. Huh, <laughs> just kidding. There's no fucking fall damage, remember? Now you two are together, because Tor swam out of the sewer. You end up fighting a boss that takes several minutes due to the very, very good combat system. You have the other amulet. The brother other fuck amulet? The Aisha who gave me this said I had to find its twin. Don't take it off! What she the fuck? <laughs> you fucking ring <laughs> on! Crazy bitch! Dip shit! <laughs> he told me never to take it off. Listen, I know so she fucking takes it off! <laughs> <laughs> you two decide to go to the King of Brightvale to tell him that clouds exist, and that means more running. Please help me, I want to die. Meanwhile, the Darkest Fairy just straight up summons an assassin and pays him by creating gold out of thin air, which, due to rampant inflation along with the coronavirus, destroyed the stock market.
Welcome to, uh, fucking Brightvale. It's the city with a fully functioning obstacle course, but no grocery store. We go to see the king of Brightvale, only to find out that the economy has regressed to that of the Weimar Republic and that he can no longer afford his insulin. So he sends you to the library to find the mystical power wand that he can trade for some. Also, it might be able to kill the darkest fairy. Not sure. So you run across Brightvale while I explain that the power wand is underneath Meridel Castle due to four tsunamis, so it's time to get to the other side of the entire map again to get it. Then the assassin intercepts you during your triple marathon sprint and then just kind of does this face. You fight him for three meters before he just kind of goes like, uh -huh, I'm not gonna fight you right now because I totally win and you better not come after me or else I'll beat you really bad. Haha, uh -huh, bye. Anyways, the bridge to Meridel has actually been destroyed and the only way to get through is to, to find a civil engineer to repair it? Welcome to Market Town. It's full of enemies that you aren't supposed to fight yet. Don't go to Market Town first. Your character soon proceeds to the town of markets named Market Town's Market, where you see Mark. After this guy dabs, he tells you that the stock market is currently crashing due to a mysterious pestilence. And the stock market offers you the guild treasure in return for killing the black guy, I mean black knight, at the top of the tower who is causing it. You proceed to run past all the high level enemies on the south side of Chicago. Once you are at the entrance of the tower, you climb a lot of ladders to get up. So many ladders in fact that I held my W key down for too long and it broke it so I had to have my laptop repaired. There's so many fucking ladders in this map! You get to the top of the tower where the black knight just kind of randomly appears. Then he does a sort of circling maneuver for the next 10 minutes because his AI is bugged. Finally, you are able to kill him when a window breaks and he kind of just sounds like this. We run all the way back to the stock market after our 500 billion stimulus is applied, but the game just ends up playing the wrong cutscene, so we just have to stay longer. He gives us the treasure, which isn't anything silly like money, but just a random item that we can't touch. Very worth it. Next, we head to the Bogshot Swamp, where supposedly civil engineers live. You go to see the bridge repair guy, but he tells you that he's too sick due to a virus that's spread by Italians. So you go to the apothecary to try and figure out how you can create a cure for being Italian. Turns out that's not the cure they're talking about, so you venture into the swamp to kill the Arch Italian. On your way, the assassin attempts to assassinate you, but you can just walk away from his assassination attempt. Very skilled. I would really like to talk about the next boss, but he kind of just appears without any sound and without any cutscene, so if the game's not gonna try, I guess I won't either. You finally kill Don Caprese, and he takes fucking nine years to die, where it is revealed that clouds clear when the monsters die, so the world can be saved by killing enough people. The bridge builder, now over his pizza addiction, finally repairs the bridge and allows us to enter the lands of Meridel once more. Eh, hey, I'm just fucking with you, there's a giant wall in the Way. The assassin just appears for no reason and then goes like, haha, the fairy magic has you stuck, you can't get in. I totally fight you right now, but I don't want to because I beat you and then you'd be dead, haha. -ha. Oh, oh shit, you're actually trying to fight me, but you, you would lose if we fought you, so I'm gonna not fight you, haha, -ha, bye. You soon figure out that the best way to destroy the dark fairy's magic is to get the earth fairy's magic to counteract it. Yeah. The one that punted you off a fucking building. Turns out she only acted that way because her amulet was stolen, and we need to get it back. So we run all the way back to my farm for no reason, only to find that the clouds have just turned everyone purple, which is still a bad thing. And because I'm racist, I set out to defeat the plant that's turning everyone purple in the woods. I will not let my daughter marry a smurf. You run through the jungle for a bit before this fucker comes back, and he's just like, haha, I would love to fight you right now, but that wouldn't be fun because I'd kill you so fast and quickly, haha. You better not come out of this hole, haha. So now you're in a hole. You walk out of the hole. I don't know why he didn't just put spikes at the bottom. You get to fight the exact same plant monster again, with the exact same moveset, exact same weaknesses, and exact same damage. Only... It takes 30 minutes to kill him as I did not upgrade Roberta's damage. Once the plant dies and everyone is unpurplificated, your father grows Alzheimer's and forgets what his own son looks like. <laughs> it doesn't know what character I am. <laughs> then he gives you a grappling hook, which is just something he had. For our next stop in ignoring the main quest, we will be heading to Afghanistan to liberate it from a resurgent Mujahideen. This will definitely make sense later. This area is nearly identical to the last time we were here, except this time I just run past all the enemies instead of fighting them. Turns out the chieftain who died of a heart attack actually resurrected himself like Bernie Sanders. We run through the entire mine without taking any damage, I'm totally serious, I actually did that, until we find al-Baghdadi himself. Only problem is that he's a copy-paste from his original version, so he's ridiculously trivial to kill. And if I sound bored with this part of the game, it's because I am. So he jumps really high to induce a second heart attack, and you save the mayor with telepathy. For your amazing work, saving the entire town from the clutches of death, the mayor gives you a cloak. 
He gives you a regular cloak. Now it's time to do what we're actually supposed to do and go get the Earth Fairy's charm. So naturally, we catch a cheap flight to Australia, which is a swamp. Our way into the spider sanctum is blocked by a gigantic skull, so it's time to go grave robbing to find a key. This prompts the assassin to appear for the 15th time, attempting to stop our crimes. So he resurrects the fucking dead. The only problem being that you can just walk away again. I then spend an unironic one and a half hours trying to get through this fucking cavern to get the key, which drove my stream insane. It's gonna hey, what you doing over there? <laughs> hey. Hey. hey, better not be uh, sexually trans transitioning. <laughs> yeah, what's that shit? Ah, oh, my fucking eye! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I can't see shit! Fuck! Oh, <laughs> uh, what the fuck? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing over there? We finally get the key and open up the skull, only to find that the inside is filled with good gameplay including a whopping two enemy types. And when we finally reach the Black Heart of Darkness, we look up only to see Remy Down Under Gaming. You're that morsel from Edison's Glade, aren't you? And just like always, I was too busy running past everything to upgrade my damage, so this fight took forever. <laughs> Quality enemy. Is that it? <laughs> what? what was- what? What? Why? And like most things involving the CIA, this fight ends with you using the heart attack gun. Now with the charm in hand and another third world country destabilized, we head to Ilzen's Glade to save the fairy. Haha, <laughs> 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 looks like you're stuck down there and you can't come up here to fight me. Don't do it, please. But remember, we have our dad's grappling hook, which lets us reach this asshole and forces him to fight us. We go at it for a bit before he unleashes his true and devastating power level. This forces us to adopt new strategies and unique tactics before he enters serious mode. We soon trade blows with a powerful and deadly opponent until he suddenly enters his Super Saiyan mode. And just when the battle looks hopeless for our heroes, he leaves. Bye. I may have said some things earlier that I may regret, but I'm I'm gone. See you later. Where Bye. <laughs> he spent nine years hyping up that battle. So we wake up the fairy, and then she gives us the orb required to get through the fog wall. At this point, I'm just very disappointed. We use our stupid fucking cloak to sneak into the castle, where we use our market town treasure to bribe a chipmunk, securing our entrance to the sewers. At this point, the plot has delved completely into incomprehensibility. We find a door in the way and miraculously open it, because that's what doors are made for. We fight our way down to the inner sanctum of Meridel Castle using cool gameplay tricks that you can try at home, as well as navigating a complex and bizarre labyrinth that I totally care about narrating. We enter the Meridel Vault and find the Insulin Power Wand. Uh, we also see the Bone Dragon. Don't worry about him, the Bone Dragon is special. So after we, uh, <clears throat> fight him... Oh, okay, he's, he's done. He's done. We attain the insulin wand and are now able to kill black fairies. I, I, dark fairies. I meant dark fairies. Take these three, for example. You just fucking tase them. They're dead now. I think I skipped a few steps showing my way over there, but fuck it. Look, I'm gonna be real with you. It looks like we're close to resolution. You know, we've liberated the kingdom. The king is free. Everyone's happy. Uh, we're barely two thirds of the way through the game. This is a very long game. It just doesn't stop. It just keeps repeating content, and the video is getting really long. If it does really well, and you know, it's, it doesn't sit perpetually at 40,000 views for the rest of existence, then maybe you'll get a second one. But until then, no more. This game is awful.